Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldon. Today, we're going to look into Death Note Volumes 7 to 9, and next week, we'll finish Death Note with Volumes 10 to 12. Also, I'll have a list of the top gunslingers in Ant Man manga. And on top of that, I'll have uh, movie reviews for Kimi no Nawa, uh, Your Name, and The Fate of the Furious sometime this weekend. Uh, you can check out my author's website at www.chrismodong.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So the, the way that this works is that I'm going to, there are going to have spoilers. Um, I'm going to give a recap of volume 7, 8, 9. And after a volume, I will give my personal thoughts on said volume. So, let's go with volume 7. Uh, the volume begins with the police apprehending Higuchi. Higuchi reveals that he has been killing people using the notebook, which he tells them uh, is in his car. The notebook is. Chief, Le Chief Yagami, L, and others touch the notebook and see Rem. Light holds the death note and remembers everything and becomes Kira once again. In a flashback, Light forfeits ownership of the death note. Rem becomes the owner. Light concocts a plan uh, by this and shows Ryuk that a piece of uh, paper from the death note is in his watch. So back to the present, Light kills Higuchi using his own blood and a piece of paper in his watch uh, from the Death Note. At headquarters, Aizawa reads the how to, use, uh, how to Use It directions written by Ryuk on the Death Note. Fake rules have been written there by Ryuk. If the person using the note uh, fails to, or the notebook fails to consecutively write names of people to be killed within 13 days of each other, then the user will die. So that's a fake rule. Also, if you m make the note unusable uh, by tearing it up or burning it, all the humans have touched the note till then will die. Also, a fake rule. L asks uh, various questions to Rem. Rem answers some, but uh, doesn't answer others. Um, so in like the lobby of the headquarters, you see Light hugging Misa and Tenor to dig something up as, because everyone's watching them on a camera. So, Misa uncovers the uh, de buried death note and regains her memories. A letter from Light is in there telling her to write Ryuzaki's real name in the notebook. Also, she is to take pages from that death note and bury it where she found it. Uh, the death note. She also, she's also told to casually have Light touch one of the pages. Uh, however, she doesn't remember Ryuzaki's name. Ryuk returns, and Misa makes the eye trade with him. Misa sees light, and he touches the piece of the death note. And, she, and then uh, he sees Ryuk. They then decide to make a new world together. Excuse me. And the next day, criminals are being killed again. Rem, uh, Rem figures out that Misa will be suspected and eventually caught as according to Light's plan. Rem then writes Watari's and L's name in, in a death note that she's holding, and they both die. Watari presses a button on his computer before dying. Light then looks for Rem, but only finds sand and a death note. He then takes that death note. It's then revealed that Watari was a famous inventor. And we are shown the Whammy's house. Um, the chief uh, tells everyone that in order to continue the investigation, they have to keep L's death a secret. Uh, Light is picked to play the role of L and Watari. 
and Chief Igami is picked to hide the Death Note. Light tells Misa that they should uh, live together. And a man named Roger informs two boys. This is at, at Whammy's house. A, a man named Roger informs two boys named Nier and Mello that L is dead. It's also revealed that Weddy, Aber, and the employees of the Yatsuba group have died, most likely from the Death Note. Nier and the director of the F FBI meet with the President of the United States. The director says that Nier is a true successor to L. So the SPK, the Special Provision for Kira, is created to go after Kira, uh, Kira with members from the CIA, FBI, and Nier. So, Light enters the NPA, and Kira's judgment is gaining momentum worldwide. Chief Yagami gets a call that the director of uh, the NBA has been kidnapped. Uh, the kidnappers want to trade for the director for the murder notebook. So Mello and his gangs are the and his gang are the kidnappers. The director hangs himself with his own necktie, though. Mello tells his gang that they'll kidnap uh, Sayu. Light's sister and like Chief Yagami's daughter next. So in a flashback, we see Mello leaving Whammy's house. Um, he doesn't really want to work with Nier. Wants to kind of do things his own way. So uh, Chief Yagami gets a call and he's told that a new trade will be dealt with the murdered notebook for Sayu. At the end of the volume, Chief Yagami calls home and his wife tells him that uh, Sayu's late. So. Thoughts on Volume 7. Um, so everyone's able to see the Shinigami. So this is actually a big thing uh, with Death Note and the world of Death Note. Uh, yeah, the world of, of the manga, pretty much. For one, they now know how Kira, or get have a general idea of how Kira is killing people using that notebook. And that Shinigami exists as well. So now you're playing with a, a definitely a new dynamic as to and more information too as to how Kira is killing who are the players in this game what are the items needed to do the killing and, and what rules and whatnot are being you you know are in effect uh, in this little I, I guess game really with Kira and people trying to find them. The fake rules are really interesting. That's a, you know another part of uh, the story, or yeah, that's a new wrinkle in the story that could fool everyone. We we don't really know um, how much that these new fake rules are going to fool people. Obviously. Kira slash Light knows that these rules are fake, um, and it's because of these rules that you know put Light uh, or give Light his innocence. You know, it's like, oh hey, he was stuck in this cell for days. He hasn't killed anyone. Hey, if he was truly Kira and these rules are real, you know, then he should have died. So. These fake rules are kind of his, uh, pretty much his alibi. You know, it's like, hey, look, I can't be Kira. Look at these rules. I would have died, you know. Speaking of died, though, wow, Al died, finally. Um, and in that sense, Kira won, you know, Light won. He outsmarted Al. And, wow, did he outsmart Al. <laughs> I mean, in just such an intricate way that was quite ingenious. I mean, he used Rem, Misa, Ryuk, the, the Death Notes. Um, you know, he said Ryuk. Well, no, he did use Ryuk, yeah. And, you know, he used Rem's feelings against herself, you know, because she had feelings for Misa. And so it was quite ingenious, you know, the fact that, like, you know, there's a gamble here. You know, Light was willing to forget that he was Kira and, and lose his memories. And there was like, 
you know, he knew that as non-Kira, you know, Light would still investigate uh, trying to find Kira and apprehend him. And he just kind of knew that eventually the Death Note will probably come his way. And it did. And from there, you know, it, his plan worked to perfection. Uh, it even got Watari uh, out of the picture as well. Uh, turns out that, uh, you know, he, he's a rich guy. Um, he kind of, both of them kind of had, had something of a plan B with the Whammy's house thing. Because, you know, Nier and Mello are like successors to Al. So it's like, okay, if Al dies, Watari dies. Hey, here's plan B. We got some new guys here, Nier and Mello, to uh, find Kira or whatnot. Um, as far as Nier goes, he's pretty emotionless. Um, he doesn't seem particularly likable or friendly at this point of the game. He's definitely loner, aloof, distant, very smart, but... Um, you know, doesn't seem like the biggest people person at this point. Mello's a lot different, you know, a little more eccentric. Um, seems more prone to anger. You know, a uh, guy with a chip on his shoulder. As far as, like, a more developed character goes, I would say that Mello is probably a little more developed than Nier. Just in the sense that he has a true conflict going on. With always being, like, seemingly, like, the second best guy and whatnot. Um, so, I'm curious to see how these two work, you know, with... There's Nier, who's a true successor to Al, but Mello's not that far behind. You know, he's really smart. And then you have Light doing his thing as well. So, that should be really interesting. And Nier also has his own organization, the SPK. Um... It's going to be very interesting how that dynamic works when, like, the SPK, you, you now have the SPK, Mello has his own gang, and then Light has, like, that task force and the NPA. So, you have three different people who work, who are, like, pretty much the leads of three different groups, you know, all trying to actually find, you know, get to Kira. So, that makes it really interesting and um like i said the dynamic now changes now that l has gone the existence of the death notes are like known to more people now and and the existence of shinigami are more are known to more people now another wrinkle that's uh put into here also that's really interesting is light as a new l you know Nier and Mello are actually aware that the original L has died. So, you know, Light being the new L, you kind of have to wonder what the true successor to L is, thinks about that and, and see how Light as L works with and or against Nier or Mello. So that, you know, with these new dynamics in play, it should be very interesting how the story goes moving forward. In Volume 8, the volume begins with Chief Yagami getting a phone call from uh, the kidnappers. Light tells the task force that he believes that Kira killed the director and not the kidnappers. The newspapers report that the NPA director has been killed. Nier is searching for Mello and it's re revealed that Mello left his photo at the orphanage. Chief Yagami gets a... I'll call him Chief Yagami because I don't want to call him Suichiro. And, you know, he, he's pretty well known as the Chief. So, I, I just... I'm more comfortable calling him Chief Yagami. Uh, so, Chief Yagami gets a call from the kidnappers telling him to bring the notebook to LA in two days. Uh, so, the Chief asks for no tricks. E-Day will take the same flight as him, but everyone else will take separate flights. Light explains the cell phone number sharing system to the task force, which enables a specific or specified group of cell phones to overhear calls made to any cell phone in the group. 
when it's only between them, you know. Light tells them that they won't plant a tracer or bug on uh, on his dad. So Light, as Al, contacts the SBK, and he speaks with Nia for the first time, who knows that he's the second L. Uh, Nia, though, gives him total authority in this operation. Chief Yagami gets discreetly approached by one of Mello's gang in the uh, airport and tells him to get on a different plane. The plane veers off course with like, Chief Yagami in it and drops Chief Yagami off in the middle of a desert. He then gets sent uh, under to an underground hatch. He makes a trade, uh, the notebook for Sayu. So a missile is shown. So a missile is shown, and it gets launched, possibly carrying the death. No uh, yeah, the death note, because also a helicopter is in flight, getting away from the place of the trade, but it gets blown up. So Chief Yagami is with Sayu in a helicopter, a different helicopter. He calls Light and tells him that he's resigning from the force. Nier tells Light, who is obviously pretending to be L, that he's going to question Sayu and Chief Yagami and will allow L to listen in. So in the Shinigami realm, another Shinigami is looking for his notebook. The one that Ryuk stole, because Ryuk had two notebooks. He decides to go to the human realm. Nier accuses L of handing the notebook to the kidnappers on a silver platter and unable to do anything about it. Nier asks Chief Yagami if the person on the phone giving him directions could have been eating chocolate. Chief Yagami says that it's possible as he did hear a crack sound. So, the Shinigami from the Shinigami realm uh, confronts Ryuk, but Light doesn't see him. They fly away from where Light is. So Ryuk tells that Shin Shinigami that he doesn't know where the notebook is, and he also reveals that he can't tell Light about him. Ryuk explains what happened with his notebook to this new Shinigami, this, uh, and this new Shinigami decides to stick with Ryuk for the time being. A uh, Ryuk. Nier tells Al that he'll capture the kidnappers and Kira by themselves and will not cooperate with them. Suddenly, many members of the SPK suddenly die. L tells Nier that they should share information, and Nier agrees. Nier tells L about Mello. Light discovers that Wemmy's house was used to find the next L. Nier and Mello were supposed to be the heirs to L. Mello calls Chief Yagami, asking who the next L is, as Light relays. Uh, to his father what he should say through a laptop. Uh, so Tota Matsuda types his name down and Chief Yagami tells Mello that uh, that's who the next L is but that he's just a mouthpiece. So Matsuda is... So Yagami pretty much just told Mello that like Matsuda is L. Yeah. Mello calls the president of the US, David Hope, and tells him that he has the murder notebook. Mello demands that he cooperate with them by giving them information about the SPK, weapons, and satellite usage. So David Hope calls L for help. L tells him that he'll need a 30-man task force and he complies. With help of Misa, Light discovers the name of the current owner of the, of the notebook, Cal Snyder. Light using the death note on Cal, discovers the address of Mello's hideout. Light has Cal killed at a later date using the death note. So the 30-man task force infiltrates Mello's hideout, but their helmets keep getting removed. Turns out that the Shinigami looking for his notebook, his name's Sido, is removing the helmets, and they all subsequently die. Um, in a flashback, the Shinigami reveals that the 13-day rule and the rule about destroying the Death Note are made up. Cal makes the eye trade with Cedo, so that's how uh, those Task Force guys die. Mello tells Cedo that once he gets a notebook from a uh, notebook from Kira, that he'll give one to Cedo. Cedo though is told to stand watch outside. Light tells Misa to quit her movie, so that she can be his wife. At the end of the volume. Mello and his gang leave the hideout and calls 
uh, David Hope, but uh, apparently he has committed suicide. So, some thoughts on Volume 8. Uh, Mello, you know, he's the one that came up with uh, this plan. Um, and it kind of worked to perfection. He got his notebook. Um, he kind of used Chief Yugami. He, he really pulled a fast one on, on L in a sense. I mean, even Nier admitted that there's really nothing he can do uh, to have stopped this plan, which was, you know, quite a master plan in a sense. Um, I'll say this with Mello's plan. And it's actually something I'm going to criticize uh, with this particular volume. And it's, you know, Death Note, obviously you have to kind of suspend your disbelief in a sense, obviously. Um, but there's kind of a point where you can do that. Like, okay, if you establish this world of a that has a Death Note, that has Shinigami... Okay, a lot of the stuff that Light was doing and L was doing wasn't outside, too outside the realm of possibility. Um, you know, it was all within reason. Over here, though, with Mello, I mean, the first thing that happened, it, there's the underground hatch, that was interesting. Um, but then it's like, well, you acquired a missile, you know, it's like, you know, you're kind of stretching it. To me, I, I know the idea, like, considering, the, like, it's still in, like, reality, you know, it's like, I, I don't know, I, 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 suppo I don't know how it works, I suppose that Mello could acquire a missile, um, that's apparently untraceable, <laughs> it, it's just... Seems a bit hard to believe, and then, like, you know, it's like you, you had to use such. It's like he he had to gain it, it wasn't really wit, I, I guess that that's my complaint here. Where it's not really wit, it's like he 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 got a freaking missile, you know, like this powerful weapon to kind of outsmart anyone, you know, and it's like. Whereas with, if, if you see L or Light, and it, like when they were still playing their game of cat and mouse, it's it's like okay, they didn't really use missiles, you know, or anything like that. Yeah, you, you had like you had this like con artist and a thief, and it's all like okay, this is this is all still within the realm of seemingly in the realm of possibility, but the realm of like using wit to and out to outsmart and in this case it's like oh use a missile you know it's like that's not really outsmarting anyone you know it's like you you more or less bought or somehow acquired a deuce ex machina you know in a sense so um i, I kind of criticize this volume for that where it's just kind of like okay I, got, I understand you have to we have to suspend our disbelief and whatnot but this one went a little too far, and it, like I said, it goes against the idea of like truly outsmarting them with just your brain, with your wit. It's like no, I I, I had to use a freaking missile to like beat you guys. You know, it's like ah, uh, you know, it's like that's like using a nuclear. You know, you might as well just use a nuclear bomb. You know, or something like that. It's like oh yeah, that, that's that's just kind of cheap. You know, it's not. It, it doesn't come across as smart, you know, it just comes across like, you somehow acquired like this grandiose weapon, that's it, it. so, can't say I, I particularly like that, another thing I'm not really big on, near, man, I want to smack that kid, <laughs> oh man, him, Ellen near, you know, near is just so condescending, you know, saying that like, oh, you handed them on a the, the kidnappers the notebook on a silver platter and then he, he admits that like oh yeah well yeah I couldn't stop it either it's like dude like it's it's just kind of stupid like I don't know what you what you're trying to uh, trying to prove here if, if you're gonna admit 
that you couldn't have really done much better than like, you know, I don't understand why you're criticizing this guy, you know, and I, I got to say, you know, I, I didn't really get a good impression from of Nier back in Volume 7, but man, that's why I'm just really made me not like the guy. I, I really hope he loses. <laughs> I, get really, I want Light to write his name in the Death Note and him to be done because, like, I liked Al. Al was a fun guy. He was funny. He was real quirky. You know, he came off a little more authentic. Where it's just like, like the, like when he said like, oh, you know, I hope it light isn't Kira because light, light is my first friend. Like it, it really came, came across like he really meant that. And then when Misa became friends with Al, he's like, I made another friend. Like he was actually like, ha you know, he seemed happy about that. You know, he, he's just this like really quirky dude. And Nier is like this wannabe quirky dude. Like, it just seemed like, oh, hey, let's have him play with these, like, toys, too, you know, to make him a bit quirky. But it's like, it doesn't really work, you know, so far. You know, maybe his personality will change, but it's just like, there's nothing about him that's, like, quirky. He's just distant, aloof, and um, a bit off-putting, you know, just like, you know, he's not particularly interesting. He's really good and really uh, perceptive and whatnot, but it's just like, you know, he's not, in my opinion, he's just not likable. I, I, you know, and the way his banter with, with Al, it, it's almost like, it, it's just that, it's banter. It's it's almost like he's whining to, to Al, you know, like, oh, you let him get away, you know. On a silver platter, you know, it's like, he might as well have cried, you know, he might as well have cried or something, you know, it didn't make him come across as endearing or, or like, better, you know, he just, it was his point, you know, being a jerk, really. Uh, we got introduced to Cedo, uh, it's very interesting too, Cedo's, um, playing, uh, really helping out Mello, you know, helping to remove the helmets and whatnot. Uh, he, Cedo also plays the role of letting Mello know that there is the existence of Shinigami. You know, there's the notebooks, these murder notebooks. Now he knows, oh, hey, there's these Shinigami going around and, you know, people can't see him. You know, so that should be really interesting. Cedo himself just kind of seems there. Doesn't seem like the brightest guy. It's also interesting that Mello has discovered that the fake rules already. I remember talking about in Volume 7, you know, about the fake rules. So I guess the, these fake rules are really going to seemingly come into play uh, as we move forward with the story. Excuse me. So in Volume 9, the volume begins with Chief Yagami in a secluded house with his wife and Sayu, who is in a wheelchair. Light tells Ryuk that he's going to help him. Uh, well, Light pretty much forces Ryuk um, and tells him that Ryuk's got to help him unconditionally for not uh, giving him information on Sido. Light tells Misa to give him her notebook and she does. Uh, Light hands Ryuk one of the notebooks and tells him to possess somebody, most likely Matsuda. Light tells Misa to pretend to be Kira. So Chief Yagami gets a call from Kira and the task force listens in. Kira tells Chief Yagami that he's going to give him his notebook in the next few days and also knows the location of the kidnapper's hideout. Kira also reveals that his notebook will enable him to find a person's name just by looking at their face. So three days later, Chief Yagami is with the task force and they see Ryuk in their headquarters. Matsuda says that he'll make a deal for the Shinigami Eyes. However, Chief Yagami volu volunteers to make the deal for the Eyes. He tells Light that he'll use the notebook if need be. He plays telescopic uh, cameras around Mello's new hideout. And three days later, at night, wearing helmets, they infiltrate the hideout. Like Aizawa, Ide, and all those guys, the Chief. Uh, not Light, though. Uh, Ryuk gets Sido. And pretty much like removes him from the picture, pretty much. 
Um, he doesn't like kill him. He just takes him aside. And Chief Yagami does a deal for the Shinigami eyes with Ryuk. Uh, Chief Yagami finds Melo and using the Shinigami eyes, finds out his real name is Mihal Kiel. Uh, he is hesitant to write his name down in the notebook, and one of the gang members, who only has half of his body, like, honestly, like, his whole lower half of his body is, like, gone, but he still manages to shoot Chief Yagami. Mello blows up the hideout. The task force manages to make it out alive and get the notebook. Chief Yagami is taken to the hospital as he is dying. Uh, he is able to see his Light's lifespan, and that is proof enough that Light is not Kira, because, you know, if he were Kira, he wouldn't be able to see his lifespan, because you can't see the lifespan of people that are, like, the owner of the notebooks. So Light acts panicked and tells his father to write Mello's name in the notebook before he dies. However, Chief Yagami dies before he can write the name down. Outside, Light gives Sido his notebook back and Sido leaves. Nier contacts L for information but refuses to give him any. And then Nier concludes that the new L is Kira but only 7% serious about it. He then tells the SPK members to investigate the Japanese task force. The vice president of the US has a press conference. In it, he says that the US has accepted Kira and will not stand in his way. Nier wants to dissolve the SPK. He has a plan involving Mello that they all comply with. He tells them that Mello will most likely come in contact with one of them, and if he does, that they should just do as he says. Nier says that there's a 70% chance that Mello will come in contact with Lindner, the only woman in the SPK. So the vice president formally announces through like television and whatnot that the SPK has disbanded. It's revealed that Mello has already been in contact with Lindner. Pointing a gun at Lindner, Mello goes to Nier's hideout and confronts Nier. Nier hands Mello the photo that he has of him in exchange. He tells Nier that the notebook is a Shinigami notebook, and those who touch the notebook can see a Shinigami. He also tells Nier of a fake role in the notebook. Kira contacts the vice president of the U.S., and he tells him to cooperate with them. Demagawa, the guy from Sakura TV, goes on Sakura TV in a segment called Kira's Kingdom, and tells everyone that he is Kira's spokesperson. Capturing Kira is a crime now, and he asks for all Kira supporters to come together. Nier contacts Alan, asks which role that he thinks is fake. Light tells him the 13-day role. Nier continues the questioning and asks if the task force has seen Al's face. And Al then cuts off the connection. Nier tells Al that Kira is among the task force. Um, Nier also, they can all listen in, by the way. So, um, the, all the task force can listen in. Nier also proposes to write Mello's name in the notebook and to test the 13-day rule in the process. If Nier doesn't die in 13 days, then it's a fake rule. Al tells Nier that they refuse. Mello calls Mogi's cell phone as the task force listens in. He tells him to go to New York and Mogi complies. Mello calls Nier and tells him that Mogi is heading to his hideout. Nier asks Mogi to join him, but he just remains silent. So at the end of the volume, Demagawa apparently got word of the SPK's hideout, and a bunch of people, just random citizens and whatnot, just go in, infiltrate, and looks like they're about to attack it. So, some thoughts on volume 9. Chief Yagami, um, well, he went through a lot, and, um, you know, he always did things in, you know, he's still, like, the pillar of, like, goodness and what is right you know and even though he did the shinigami eyes he you know he is hesitant to write the name in the notebook um at the end of the day you know he, he was just he always was the good guy so it's really unfortunate that he died i guess it had to happen um it's crazy though that light that Light 
obviously, like, throughout, like, the whole manga so, so far, you can tell that he respects his father, you know? Uh, but, like, it's crazy that Light is willing to kill his father if need be, and even act, you know, feign this panic, you know, like, or fake this, like, panic just to get the upper hand. Uh, it really goes to show how deeply affected Light has gotten from the notebook to the point where, like, even the death of his father, it seemed to have affected him, but not that much. And it, it's like this bigger goal of being Kira is just that much more important. Mello, lucky to have gotten out alive. Um, and, and once again, uh, same criticism. Uh, I have to get the same criticism here. Uh, because Mello escaped because he had a bomb to blow up his hideout. You know, and it's like, he's not doing, you know, and maybe it's, it's the Mello character. Maybe he just does uh, maybe the, they're just showing that Mello doesn't have the same wit that Nier has, or Al had, or, or even Light has. And he has, well, I guess the fact that he's, like, aligning himself with, like, gang members that, you know, he does things more roughly, I guess. And he uses a little less wit. He definitely uses weapons a lot more. So... Uh, Maybe that's the thing with Mello and why he's like second best, but it's kind of like, oh, you escaped because you blew up the hideout. And once again, it's like, there's no witty thing here, you know? He's not using his wits to escape. It's just, hey, I, I got another super, you know, a, a powerful weapon, a bomb, <laughs> you know, and I just so happened to escape, you know? can't really say I like that just because the way Death Note works is like everyone's getting the better of each other using their their smarts. Mello, I guess, sometimes using that, but a lot of times he's not. Um, it's interesting though that uh, it's being said that Kira is more and more being accepted by society. Even the US apparently has accepted Kira. Um, I can see that, if, you know, I can see that happening because Kira is doing evil for an overall good, you know, it's like, hey, I'm killing criminals and yeah, it's not lawful, but it is getting rid of, you know, these malcontents and, and just, the scum of society, pretty much. It's interesting that Mello met up with Nier. They, even though he doesn't want to work with him, he ends up just working with him in a sense. Um, Nier seems to be using Mello in a sense. Uh, Mello was, you know, divulging information to Nier. He brought Mogi to Nier. Uh, so, even though Mello doesn't want to work with Nier, Seems like, on, well, Mela has nowhere else to go anyways, so, like, he kind of has to work with Nier at this point. Nier's questioning of L, um, it's kind of an, uh, like, so you've seen his face, and then he gives, like, this, like, smile, or this, like, smirk, and it's really annoying, like, I, I, I am not big. I, I just don't like Nier. <laughs> he, he's just, he has this like condescending. And he has this like way of saying like, I got you. And like being like kind of haughty about it. And I just, I really don't like it. I mean, his question of Al was, um, was smart. He got a lot out from Al. He got the fact that, you know, Al has a Shinigami there. And he's seen like, uh, Al's face, uh, among other things, so, you know, he got what he wanted, but, you know, like I said, man, I just, not a big fan of Al, uh, not a big fan of Nier. 
It's very interesting that Light is using Demogawa at this point. I guess, you know, Light... One thing that Light is really good at is using people. I like just using people for his own ends. And, um... Kind of, you know, he's kind of using a pretty scummy guy <laughs> to uh, do his work, but like, it's a resource, and you know, he, he knows that L Light knows that like people are on Kira's side. He can get this loud mouth to get even more people on his side, and as seen at the end of the volume, it's kind of worked in his favor. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to these manga reviews. Next week, I will review Death Note Volumes 10 to 12, which will finish the series, and have a list of the top gunslingers in anime and manga. Also, I'll have movie reviews for uh, Kimi no Nawa, which is your name, and The Fate of the Furious. Thank you, and until next time.